everyone. So I have a little checklist that I want to go through with you today. As you know, the exam is coming up. I hope you're not feeling too nervous about it. I just wanted to go through maybe some of the common problems you might be facing based on what score you're currently achieving and then maybe a couple of fixes that you could give a go and see if that makes any difference. So I first want to address if you are taking doing these past papers and you're finding that in the given time, 90 minutes, you're getting in the 20 to 30 range. Now, by no means this is a bad score, but obviously um, it's certainly worth addressing some of the more common things you could be doing that might help you to lift that up a little bit. So I think if you're getting that 20 to 30 range, it is definitely worth going over each question type just one more time. Not necessarily just to kind of know what they are, but more to understand you yourself, how you would approach each one. So uh, becoming faster at recognizing, let's say one of those floor questions, reading that and knowing immediately which category it falls into and therefore the method that you have to carry out, it's definitely worth just going over that again and for yourself working out that method. Now, if you're getting into the 30 to 35 range, I would at this point, apart from doing what uh, I've already suggested, is basically to make a little tally of what you're getting wrong in terms of critical thinking versus problem solving. And we can try to start isolating where the problems might be coming from, um, because obviously a 30, a 32 scored by one person won't be the same 32 scored by another person. One might have got 25 in critical thinking and then seven in the problem solving. For the other, it could be the other way around and so on. So. You want to really figure out where for you you're um, maybe losing marks on. So I think now we can kind of divide into two separate points from here. So the first one is the more kind of common error kind of question, which is where you're basically missing the point of a question. Maybe you figured out uh, you've done something backwards. You've missed out a necessary condition. So the way you can check if it is this type is if you look at the answer and then you can immediately see by looking at the correct answer. Oh, this is where I went wrong. This is why this is the correct answer. If this is the case, uh, then we need to address this a bit differently. You need to continue to drill those questions. And if it is that you're missing out little parts, you need to start highlighting, extracting out the necessary information, giving yourself a little key or like jotting down those key points. And then most importantly, marking with a star those questions that you're getting wrong so that when you go back through for a check, you would be able to give those questions special attention. Now, if it is the other type of error, which is basically you're looking at the answer and you're still not entirely sure why your answer is wrong or why their answer is right, then I would go back to the question types and again, figure out, right, what category does this fall into? You need to really understand why you are wrong or why you are right, as well as just getting the correct answer, basically. If you don't figure that out, then it's likely you're kind of going to be stuck in this range. So to really break out of this, you do need to have a really clear understanding of how each question is like properly answered, not just being, oh, I think this is right. So I was, you know, I got this one. If you if you do that, then this is the kind of score you, you might achieve. Now, if you're getting 35 to 40, at this point, I would probably say you've got a pretty good sense of the question types. You pretty much understand, um, you know, how the question should be answered, why you got the correct or wrong answer. Um, but you might be making some more of those common mistakes I uh, mentioned earlier. In that case, as I said, go through those strategies. Um, at this point, it might also be that you're not having enough time to uh, spend on each question. So you kind of know where to go, but it's taking you too long to kind of set yourself up and then get into the process part of it and actually solve it. Um, if this is the case, then uh, now would be a pretty good time to just start looking for um, similar question types and kind of memorizing almost. Um, the patterns, the things that you see. As I've mentioned before, these questions are incredibly repetitive. So, you know, for example, if you're at the stage, it's likely those main conclusion ones you see and you're just kind of like flying through, you can recognize it really easily. This is completely doable for the remaining questions as well. All it takes is just collecting them all into one place and kind of looking them over in turn. And if you do enough in a row, you'll start to see, okay, this is where it's coming from. And you kind of have that muscle memory start to kind of develop when you look at these questions. Um, now the final kind of stage is, I suppose, when you're getting sort of consistently 40 uh, and above, I would say at this point, it mo mainly seems to come down to timing. So I'm, uh, you might be able to answer the questions fairly confidently and given another, say, 30 minutes, you could probably score close to 50. Then uh, at this point, this is when you need to become really, really methodical and start allocating yourself really, really strict times 
for let's say the critical thinking elimination pattern like these faster response questions if you're really comfortable with them then i would say as soon as it gets to 40 seconds you move on you're done with it and that would give you more time to work on those that inevitably take more time because it does require more processes or it means that you have to do more calculations there are some that you just can't avoid there being more time taken so this is when you have to just basically become really really strict and um become really uh methodical as i said um i think above all and this applies for every single point that you might be i really do think memorizing the questions that you find really difficult is really useful because they're so um the content might change but the question is basically the same so let's say you really struggle with let's say spatial questions um then look at all the ones that have come up previously and you'll see it's only a certain number it's either how shapes fit together or when you look at a shape how it looks from different angles or a die and it's like split up or it's a cube and you want to see what it would look like on the other side there's only a few types and so with that information what you can do is with each one take like a good 10-15 minutes with each one just to figure out okay if i get this this is what i'm going to do this is the method that works for me this is how i'm going to get to the answer or maybe you could look at how you would eliminate wrong answers at least giving yourself a bit more kind of um you know confidence in choosing the correct answer so i think um no matter where you are i think there's all of the points that i've mentioned could possibly help you but uh, I would say just don't feel too overwhelmed at this point. The TSA is just one element of your application. Of course, it is important, but it's a holistic thing. And I would say if you're getting really, you know, scoring really well on critical thinking and not so much on problem solving or vice versa, that isn't something that will be ignored because individual scores are also generated as well. So, you know, don't give up on it. Just try your best. And once the exam's done, it's done. I would say no matter how it went, just basically move on straight away, get back into A2, get back into interview prep and with the rest of your applications. I'll be posting a lot more content about um, how you should be kind of managing your A2 studies to get you know the best results, how to manage the rest of your application period and just general advice. So hopefully some of those things might be useful for you as well. Um, so I hope that was helpful and there's not much time left. So if there are any uh, last minute questions, please feel free to um, leave a comment and I'll try to uh, get somebody to answer you as soon as possible.